Hi, I'm Chad from Purple Collar Life. This is Jennifer. We're going to talk to you today about the top things we recommend for dry camping with a larger RV. Our fifth wheel is 37 feet long, so it's not exactly the shortest. But as you can see from the map, we've traveled quite a few places thanks to and in part because of this fifth wheel RV. And of the places we've traveled, well over a hundred nights of travel time, only about 15 of those nights have we been connected to any utilities. So we're going to talk to you just briefly about the things that we think are really important to have if you plan on dry camping a lot with a larger RV. Well, because I think the, the misconception is that if you have a large RV, you always have to have utilities, which is definitely not the case. These items are in no particular order. But the first one we're going to talk about is our Blackstone 17-inch griddle. There's a couple reasons that we really like it for dry camping. Number one is, it's easy to store and travel with. You can see the size of this is really small. We've got the carry case that I showed you in the video about the Blackstone and the unboxing. I'll go ahead and put that video link up above. But it's very small, easy to travel with. Doesn't make a mess because you can move it wherever you want to cook from. So originally in that first video I said that we bought the LP gas hose. We actually haven't used that very much. We've been moving this further away from the camper, closer to where we're eating. So I just set a little table up, we move it out to the little table, and then all the mess is out there, easy to wipe down the table. But as far as the dry camping goes, you know, this week at camp we had, you know, one meal was pork chops, potatoes, corn, and pineapple, and I had zero pots and pans to wash. He cooked everything right on the griddle, cleaned up off the griddle, and the only thing that we had to wash afterwards were our plates and utensils. We cooked taco meat directly on the griddle, we had sausage with peppers and onions directly on the griddle. Bacon and eggs. So it cuts down the need for having skillets, pots and pans. You can just do so much of it right on here and you don't have to worry about washing dishes afterwards. And it is so portable. You just take one of these little 16.4 ounce cans with you wherever you want to cook from and it's really easy to warm up. It just takes you know a short amount of time to warm up, a short amount of time to cook and very little cleanup time. Another thing we recommend for dry camping is some type of a lantern. You might see on big rigs, um, when they're hooked up to electric, they have fancy cute lights um, all around their awning. And while it does look nice, it's really not practical for the type of camping that we do when we're at the lake or when we're traveling. Putting those lights up and then having um, an electric supply to get to those lights isn't something feasible or important to us, but having a lantern has been very helpful. So this particular lantern I bought at least 20 years ago. It's a Coleman North Star electric ignition single mantle propane lantern. It just runs off those same little 16.4 ounce bottles. That's actually what makes the chassis of the lantern. But uh, it stores really small because the bottle comes apart. You've got these two things in the box. Now they're actually sold with the plastic container they come in. I think they're about $75. So it's not a bad price. You get a lot of life out of these. The bottles last a long time and they provide a nice amount of light for at nighttime. If, you know, we put it on the picnic table and we cook s'mores and mountain pies and play, even play cards under the light of the single mantle lantern. It works great. Another really key item, and we've talked about it before, is the Honda 3000 EU IS generator. Now, I'm not saying you have to get that particular generator, but we've had that generator for quite a number of years and it's worked great for us. Um, that generator with 3,000 watts of power is enough, and I've had a lot of people ask me this question, is it enough to power your 13,500 BTU air conditioner? It absolutely is. All we do to make sure that we have plenty of power for the air conditioner is make sure that at the same time the microwave is not running, the hot water tank is not running, or anything else with, with a significant draw. But by itself, that 3,000 watt generator is plenty to power our air conditioner and most of the things we need in the RV. Now if we do want to run the hot water heater off of electric rather than propane, or if we want to run the microwave, we just go ahead and turn the air conditioner off for a few minutes and, and the generator does fine. 
And I want to add that if you're spending the money to buy a big rig, a, a fifth wheel or some type of a large RV, I would definitely set aside enough money if you're planning on dry camping to get a good generator. There's really nothing worse than being at camp and trying to relax and being near someone who has an inexpensive generator that's super loud. I don't know what those kinds are, are called. I mean, for example, you can get a really cheap generator at Harbor Freight that'll run a lot of things in your RV, but it is so noisy that it would be difficult to relax, not only for you, but for the people in the sites anywhere near you. I did a video, and I'll show clips in this video, of our generator running the air conditioner in a camper, and I believe it was at about 57 to 60 decibels. So that's extremely quiet for a generator that's putting out that amount of power. Exhaust side of the generator, 20 feet away. with the air conditioner running on high. About 61 or 62 decibels when I'm not talking. Generator running just charging my laptop running my laptop charging some phones and devices on a charger fifty five fifty six decibels when I'm not talking and having this generator has allowed us, I mean, we've gone on multiple trips uh, out west. We've gone to Yellowstone, Mount Rushmore, um, and we can just drive and pull over in a parking lot, uh, turn the generator on, we'll microwave something to eat if we want to, or if it's hot, get a little bit of air to be able to rest. So that generator has really allowed us to not have to worry about having utilities. And you can see it's sitting now where it sits most of the time, right in the bed of the truck. We don't have to worry about lifting it in and out. We just leave it there and we can run it directly from that location. One of the things that I can't believe I waited so long to add to the camper, and I probably waited eight years before I put this in, is this 12 volt power outlet. And you can see this one has three different parts. There is a USB connection for charging at two amps and one amp, so there's two two USB plugs here. There is a LED indicator that lets you know you have power to that. And I leave that powered all the time. It's directly connected to the battery of the camper. I was able to connect it right through the inverter connection here at, at the breaker below it. So it's got power all the time. It also has a power point, like a cigarette power point, that you can plug in that 300 watt inverter I showed you in the solar panel information video and then I also like that it always shows me the voltage of the battery now it's not super accurate but it's always relatively close to what my Victron shows me that the battery levels at and this is just a good visual indicator at any point of how much of your battery you have for example when the solar is charging it this will be up at 13.1 even as high as 14 volts but if I'm running a lot of electricity out of the camper and not getting much solar or the generator is not turned on you'll see that drop down to 12 volts and that lets me know a rough indication of how much power I'm using out of the battery at any time. What the entire family really likes about this addition to the camper is that it lets you charge your cell phone at any time. When the generator's not running, when you're not connected to any power, this is always connected to the battery of the camper and it's easy to go ahead and plug your, your cell phone or your tablet in and give it a quick charge. How much does that cost? This costs under $30. I can put links to similar ones down below in the description. But this is certainly something that I would recommend installing right off the bat if your camper does not have USB ports directly connected to the battery. This took me probably two or three hours to install. I had to drill the holes and run the wires back behind this panel. So it wasn't a difficult installation. It just took some time and it took having the right tools uh, drilled the proper size to drill the three holes. Another really important thing that I don't think people talk enough about is LED replacement lighting. 
Now our camper is a 2011, so it did not come with LED bulbs. It came with regular incandescent bulbs. And I don't think people realize how much power those use when you're on battery and not connected to electricity. So I'm using the Victron battery monitor here, and I'll put screenshots up above. But just sitting here, just with a couple phones plugged in charging, we're using one amp and 13 watts of power at this time. These lights I have not replaced with LED bulbs yet just for an idea for how much they use. As soon as I turn those lights on, we're now at 3.8 amps and 47 watts of power that we're using. And I'll put that screenshot up above. So that's just two small bulbs using an additional 37 watts and 2.73 amps. These bulbs I have replaced with LED bulbs. So we're back to one amp draw and 13 watts. When I turn those LED bulbs on, I've gone to 1.16 amps and 15 watts. So it's using two watts and about 0.15 amps. So that's a significant difference. And actually I've replaced all the bulbs in the camper other than those two above the kitchen sink with these LED bulbs. That transition from incandescent to LED bulbs was very fast. They're just plug and play. I took the old bulbs out, put the new bulbs in, and again, significant savings of battery power. And when you're dry camping, that makes a big difference to save as much battery as you can. So when we flip a switch inside this, the cabinet that turns on all our interior overhead lights, with six bulbs, we're using less than even one bulb of power in the incandescent bulbs. Here's an example of what those LED bulbs look like when they're installed. They're about $13 to $20 for a pack of 20 of them. I'll put links down below. Again, that's a really easy switch to make in your camper. If you don't already have LED bulbs, it saves you a lot of battery power. A couple other things that kind of go together that I certainly couldn't live without when we're dry camping in the heat of the summer. One is this fan. So this is a small metal fan. It is this Opolar rechargeable metal USB fan and it actually puts out a surprising amount of air and what I've learned is there are two settings on the back. There's a low and a high, one or two, and when we first bought this last year, these lithium ion batteries inside charged and worked fine for about half of the night. This year, a year later, those batteries don't work at all. But we've discovered you can use this still by connecting it to some type of a power pack. Now this is a PowerNow 10,000 milliamp hour power pack. So if I plug the fan into the one amp output of this power pack, we use this throughout the night on the one amp output on level one or level two of the fan and this battery pack will last us the entire night of the fan running. And that makes a big difference on a hot summer night. You've got the windows open, but the fan just creates that air movement around you that makes it a little bit cooler. So those two things go well together. Like I say, this worked fine for the first year on the batteries that were included, but only about half the night, whereas the power pack lets it go the entire night. I have another power pack. This is a solar recharging power pack. It's only 5,000 milliamp hours though, so it'll run this fan the entire night long only on setting number one. If you go to setting number two, it'll only do about half the evening. If you want to use this fan out in the main area of the camper, those USB ports that I connected to the battery, this can also connect directly to those. So we can run this off the battery of the camper and it has very little draw. So just to recap, you know, we spend the bulk of our camping either at the lake you see behind us. The other type of traveling that we do is when we go on long distance trips where we spend a lot of our time you know in a parking lot at a Walmart or at a rest stop somewhere so about 90 percent of the traveling that we do we have zero utilities so the items we went over with you are definitely things that we would not be able to do dry camping without. I mean yes there's other things that you can splurge on but kind of what we went over are the things that are most important to us.
and, and like she said earlier, the, the biggest expense is that generator. I would just go ahead and add that into the price of the camper when you're pricing a camper, whether new or used, because that's certainly something to think about. And a lot cheaper than if you bought a whole bunch of lithium ion batteries. I know a lot of people are adding solar to their RVs and they're buying, you know, four or six pack of those lithium ion batteries and those are $1,000 a piece. Plus then you're looking at solar panels for on the roof or portable panels. So that really, that expense is much greater than the generator. And I think the, the amount of time we've had the generator, it's had a very good payoff year after year with the amount of traveling that we've done. And like Jennifer said, it doesn't require any setup time like your, you know, you have to be in the sun for your solar to work. But we can pull into a Walmart after a day of traveling in the shade and the rain and still turn that generator on and have plenty of power to microwave a meal or turn the air conditioner on for a little bit to get some relaxation. And there's nothing wrong if people like to you know, spend their time camping at RV parks or places where there's full hookup. It's just not the type of camping that we typically do. So again, those things that are super important to us, the generator would be number one. Um, Chad really cannot sleep when it's hot. So that little fan has made all the difference in having those rechargeable packs. The Blackstone Griddle makes meals a lot better when you're traveling um, and, and, and I think better meals not just kind of in a rush or this is what we have so we're going to go ahead and make this meal you can actually plan meals ahead of time and say here's what we'd like to have for dinner on tuesday get the griddle out and quickly make a nice meal that 12 volt charger that chad installed right inside the door of the camper prior to him doing that you know we would realize that um, we'd let our cell phones um, die down and the, the batteries would be depleted and there's three of us so by the time we would get those charged on the generator when it was running if we were traveling um, it, it really wouldn't charge that quickly right. so having that ability to charge our cell phones regardless if we have electric or the generators turned on has been great and I think a lot of new campers probably come with USB ports that are connected to the battery but if like us if you have an, a little bit older not super old but a little bit older camper that didn't have the LED bulbs or the 12 volt USB ports those are really quick and easy things to add that are very inexpensive and make all the difference in the world when you're dry camping and extending the life of your battery. And the only other thing was that lantern. Again, it's not something that you have to have, but if you're dry camping and you want to be outside at night, you know, running out those outdoor lights um, can really drain your battery if you don't want to turn your generator on. So having a lantern has provided us the opportunity to be able to sit out at the fire, fix some meals, Chad and I play a lot of cards. It gives us enough light. And that particular lantern is really easy because you don't have to carry matches or anything to light it. It's an instant spark light when you tw twist the knob. So you don't have to worry about matches. You don't have to pump the old oil like the old Coleman lanterns. It's just a really easy, really packable uh, travel lantern that, that goes nicely with dry camping. You know, and even the campground that we're at right now, this entire you know row that has water frontage, if you would walk down it, the majority of people are in tents. Typically, people who have um, a, an RV the size of ours, they're going to choose the sites that have at least electric. Um, but we can pull in wherever you know, is long enough for our rig to be able to sit because we have these things to provide us without electricity. And I think it's, it's nice knowing that we don't have to rely on finding a spot somewhere that has electricity or the other utilities. We know that as we travel across country, Anywhere that we pick a spot, as long as it's big enough for our rig, we can make it work. Okay, well thank you for joining us. Click that subscribe button, share and like and comment about your travel adventures, what works for you. If you have other suggestions for people on what they should take with them dry camping, suggestions for us, absolutely please share those also. Thank you. Thank you.